Good afternoon all. Welcome to Bro Billionaire. Hope you guys had a good uh, trading day. Uh, I was a little disappointed yesterday as uh, most of you folks did not uh, watch my video. Uh, a few folks who had watched would have understood how uh, market would have played today. I had very clearly called out uh, it might be a range bound day today because of the overlapping CPR and had advised to trade with caution. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is uh, the Cambrilla pivots. Time and again, I have informed you what are the Cambrilla pivots. What is R3 or H3 level? It is a buying zone, right? So you have a buying zone here. Below this is a selling zone. In simple terms, R3 is selling zone, R4 is selling zone, S3 is buying zone, S4 is buying zone. That's the reason you see them in red and green. Now, once this buying zone is broken upside, which means the resistance has been broken. So morning, somewhere here I had given a call where I uh, took a stop loss of 10 points. Later on, it slowly moved to R4. And how does one should have traded today? If you had traded near R3 and if you had the patience to keep stop loss below R3, the next target would have been R4. Above R4, it is a breakout, right? It is a completely breakout. It moved very slowly, painstakingly slow without giving uh, any trade. You can see the overlapping candles, which means there weren't much moves in the market, uh, you know, 120 odd points move. But here, when you see near R4, R4 is what? The second selling zone after R3. So what should you do? Whether you are in uptrend or downtrend, you will book your profit and wait for R4 level to be broken upside. If not, you will be looking for taking a trade downside. Agreed here, we had one doji and a evening star and we had overlapping candle coming here and then market reversing here. So probably whoever took a trade here, keeping stop loss above high of the day would have booked few points. But once market started reversing, again, in a range bound day, it's always scalping. Market once again came back to test the high. So here, watch very clearly folks, how, how to pick up the sign. So the first selling happened here. So this was the first clue. You have an evening star. So you know this level, the week to body or week to cam, week to body. Yeah, let's keep week to body. This candle I'm talking about would act as a selling zone because that is where market reacted and it's near R4 Cambrilla pivot, which is again a selling zone. The market comes here, gives one reversal pin bar. This is the first reversal pin bar, then follow up another reversal pin bar. This entire reversal pin bar is engulfed, right? Giving a false breakout above R4, but you guys know that we have high here. Always remember high of the day, low of the day are also important pivots. So market needs to break so that you have a high probability trade. But immediately what happens next? Market tries to break and within the same candle, you have weak to body engulfing candle. So the way I, I read price action is first weakness because I'll tell you second weakness and the confirmation. Yes, all this trade, you could take a trade keeping stop loss above high of the day, right? So your stop loss probably would have got hit with this candle, but if you follow a stop loss based on five minutes closure basis, then definitely you had a high probability trade. Or suppose if you just follow once, once the uh, market hits your stop loss, whether your five minutes is closed or not, if you are exiting, yes, it hit it your stop loss with this candle, but once it formed a, a engulfing candle, you had a clear sign to take a trade in this candle. This was a sharp reversal candle. And look how what happened here. Okay, I'm going to remove this one. Selling zone, first evidence, second, third, fourth evidence, you have a selling area and market sharply falls. It falls completely to H3 and it finds buying pressure. So before you see, okay, this is again a strong buying zone, right? You have a long wicks here. 
completely long wicks here. Suppose market would have broken R3, then the next level would have been around this zone, somewhere around 17,100 zone. So this was a established buying zone because market was taking support here. And R3 is buying zone. That's the beauty of Cambrilla, isn't it magic? Once you got a reversal uh, pin bar, anybody who had taken a trade here, you would have had very strong uptrend. If you switch to 15 minutes, what happened here? You have a very strong reversal pin bar. Probably below the close of this, you could have kept a stop loss and you could have traded back to the buying area. Why you should trade this? This is how a range bound is, should be traded. This is the range low, this is the range high. Yes, albeit it was around 12.30 p.m. where it uh, established a low and clear high of the day with this fall. So you know, based on the today's overlapping CPR, I mean, the engulfing CPR, it was a range bound day and it was a high probability call. If you had taken a trade here, it would have tested the range low. Hope this helped you to understand how price action works with pivot. Now, without fail, let's quickly move to, oh yeah, I wanted to show you one more thing. Suppose you, if you follow indicators, right? So these levels are at the same and this was somewhat going upside on five minutes, the same peak here going down. Watch this peak, the reversal pin bar peak is here. So clearly showing market is going down negative divergence, market price showing one direction, RSI peak showing some or downward direction. It shows the momentum upside is not there. So this was another indication for you to take the trade. All right. Now, how does tomorrow looks? Okay. Let me quickly remove all this. Just open tomorrow's period. So yesterday I said uh, the next stop would be 17,300. 17,300 is still intact because this is a range bound, right? And as you can see, range low is the S1 where the body has closed. That's the reason why pivots work accurately. 17,180 is the S1 for tomorrow. Below that, we have a very strong buying zone. 17,155 was the area which I had marked. That is Friday's high. All right. So there is a small gap left and always gap acts as strong support. And also, if you see, there is a light yellow dots. These yellow dots are nothing but weekly high. So market is above the previous week high. There are no other yellow dots, right? Yes. This is weekly high. This one I'm talking about 17,155. So if tomorrow there is a gap up and if the range is broken, this high is broken and price sustains above R1 or below S1, we have a strong buy zone. But above R1 till 17,300, it is a strong supply zone where a where lot of selling happened previously, but that selling happened on 17th December. We are 29th December. You should anticipate if there's a gap up and 17,300 is broke, broken, we will be moving towards 17,380 zones. This is the next level of uh, resistance there. About this, the next level is 17,533. So for this, what needs to happen? Price needs to sustain above R1 or below S1 for a high probability trade, right? Hope this helped for the levels. I mean, yes, guys, this is this is uh, as simple as it can be. There is no other way. Once you know it is ascending CPR or descending CPR, engulfing CPR, the trend bias is upside. So this is the pivots for you. So where did the price open below R1? Once it sustained above R1, market was going up. But when you use these float pivots in combination with Cambrilla pivots, you will see the direction, clear direction, above R3, uh, Cambrilla, above R1 pivot. Yeah, the bias is on the upside, whether it's range bound or, or it is a, range breakout day. 
So that is how you had to work. And once again, price came back to R1, price closing above R1 with a sharp reversal pin bar. Yeah, it was a buying. Even in the last 30 minutes, you could go ahead and confidently buy because the stop loss is very, very close by. Hope this helped. Thank you all. Have a good day.